I'm out at Ruffner Mountain here in Irondale, and this is a place I like to walk, take a little break. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about the beauty of creation and how we need to take time to spend time in creation and to be blessed by it. It's God's gift to us. You know, we're told in Genesis chapter one, God called the dry land earth and the waters that were gathered together, he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Genesis 1, 9. It's almost as if God is delighting. He sees that it's good. He's delighting in his creation, which is quite a statement, right? The creator, the infinite God delighting in. And we share in that delight. When we're in his creation, when we're in natural beauty, when we take a walk or something and just observe, we can experience some of that seeing that it was good. You know, creation is God's gift to us. He made it for us. It, it's made to benefit us, to bless us. We can say in a real way, it, it nurtures us. It fosters something in us. I think it helps us to have a little more contemplative stance that quickly leads to God himself, you know, because it all comes from him. And we notice that it is beautiful. It is beautiful. You know, St. Thomas Aquinas said that beauty is that which pleases when seen or heard. It's pleasing to us. It refreshes us. It restores us. It renews us. And Wisdom 13.3 tells us, for from the greatness and beauty of created things, comes a corresponding perception of their creator. That we can see and know something of the creator himself, that these things point to God himself who made them. You know, they, he is beauty itself. And these things share in that beauty. You know, in all of this too, we walk away from it with a sense that this is for me. I take a walk in the woods, I experience something beautiful. I feel kind of nurtured, kind of uplifted. And I say, God made this for me. It's a very personal kind of connection to it. And we desire a deeper connection with God. We know kind of a peace and experience of him through his creation and we want more. St. Thomas Aquinas would call nature, he'd say that nature is God's art. You know, if you've ever seen, like gone to see a great painting, maybe you're able to go to a museum and see some great work of art. There's something special about being in the presence of the painting itself, not just a print. They can do incredible reproductions today. But when you see the painting itself, I got to see Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl uh, earring. They came to Atlanta, I drove over and saw it and my mom and there is something when you walk into that room, it just kind of pops, it kind of stands out. There's something kind of alive about it. You see, if you're ever blessed to go travel to Athens and see the Parthenon, it just seems like it's alive. You know, it speaks to us of the artist. There's something about a connection with the artist we might even experience. Well, the same is true for the natural world. From Amos 5, uh, verse 8, it reads, He who made the Pleiades and Orion, who turns midnight into dawn and darkens day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out over the face of the land, the Lord is his name. We read that in the office, and I'm always struck by that. He who made the Pleiades and Orion, you know, the, these uh, constellation of stars, and the Lord is his name. He is the one who made this. And we know that God is a mystery. There's this great majesty to God. And all of creation is charged with this mystery that reflects God. You know, we, you know, science can study and unlock secrets and have theorems of, to, uh, to explain natural phenomena. But it seems like the more the scientist investigates, the more questions he has. And that's reflect, reflecting the very mystery of God. You know, another way I think that nature has this mystery is the surprise that is contained in beauty. 
You know, when we come across something beautiful in nature, we're kind of surprised by it, we're taken by it. We could say that the ordered universe, you know, how things are connected and depend on each other, reflects God's freedom and his intelligence, you know, even his creativity. And we come across something strikingly beautiful. There's, it even exceeds this. There's something, a super added goodness that beauty is to a thing. We come across maybe a rainbow or morning fog. You know, you're driving into work or something. A sunset, storm clouds on the horizon. You know, just a, a beautiful summer rain. And I think it's a call we have upon us to observe these things, to be open to these things, and to contemplate them, to reflect upon them. This takes time. We need to make some time to do this, to let God speak to us in this natural beauty, this natural wonder around us. And I find a great fruit of this is peace. You know, in our, our virtual world, so to speak, certainly in front of our screens, we can look at things we want to look at, we can be entertained, we can be dazzled, we can be even overwhelmed by color and splendor in a certain sense. And we lose that contemplative stance. And, and we can kind of get focused in on ourselves. You think about just like driving in a car, you know, we can get everything just the way we want it. You know, the, the climate, the music we like, and it's kind of keeps bringing us back to ourselves. I kind of discovered this myself in a deeper way during COVID. You know, just taking breaks and taking a walk outside. It was a wonderful source of peace and relaxation for me. We need that today. Our world seems very tense. You know, we have 24 hour, seven day a week news cycles and we're just pounded by bad news a lot and can experience a lot of tension, the pandemic, everything. I just encourage you all and myself to take some time to be alone with God and his creation. We're here at the end of the trail at a beautiful overlook that overlooks the downtown city of Birmingham. We have the airport with planes taking off and landing. And there's something beautiful about it. There's a beautiful aspect to this vista. And it strikes me that the natural world's beautiful and also that man is called to cultivate and till the garden. In Genesis, we see that. Before the fall, he's given that command. So it's proper that we develop all that the world has to offer to develop it, and to even in a sense, in a good sense, create wealth and to develop. And in doing that, we develop ourselves. We use our strengths, gifts, and talents, ingenuities. We can serve one another. We can build a, a civilization. We can create art, we can create beauty. It's a share in, in God's creation itself. He creates from nothingness. We take what he's given us though and we fashion, we create something beautiful as well. So please like, comment, share, subscribe to our channel and social media and I'll give you a blessing. May our Heavenly Father shine his face upon you, may he give you his peace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit.